This is the readiness data screen off of one of the scan tools we use frequently. We're focusing on this part highlighted in red here. Let's expand it up so we can have a look at what it all means to us. We've got a number of display monitors here. Misfire monitor, fuel system monitor, com comprehensive component monitor, catalyst monitor. Some things support it, some things are not. Now this is what we're looking for. All the monitors have run and completed and have no failures found. This means we have a clean vehicle. It's a nice way to look at this and see when you're finished with a repair that this is what you have. However, we sometimes find we've got failed monitors. Now notice that the fuel system monitor has failed. And sometimes when we have a monitor that fails, it blocks other monitors from running because of enabling conditions. We're going to talk a bit about enabling conditions. The fuel system monitor has failed. The oxygen sensor monitor in this case has passed. But the misfire monitor has not run because the fuel system monitor failed after the oxygen sensor had passed its test. Engine temperature has to be between 20 degrees Fahrenheit and 250. RPM range can be anywhere from 150 to fuel cutoff. The profile factor learned about the crankshaft has to be learned, and the fuel level has to be at least 15%. These are just safeguards, so we don't set a false code. If you go back to retest and get a second trip after a failure, you're going to have to use more data than this. This is not going to be enough. But look at some of the enabling conditions. Here's one for a MAP sensor, P0106. The MAP sensor change was more than 0.33 volts with steady throttle and engine speed. Well, what were the conditions? The engine speed was stable within 150 RPM for four tenths of a second. The idle air control was stable within 10 counts for that same time frame. The throttle angles was stable within 1% for that time frame, and the EGR, EGR position did not change. But the MAP signal changed more than 0.33 volts in 16 milliseconds. Now, we can't have a code P107 or P108, other codes relating to a MAP sensor. Very specific thing to look for. We have a glitch in the map. So just saying the map changed or we have a map problem isn't nearly as informative as understanding what really happened here and what we should be looking for. 107 says the map sensor is too low, under a tenth of a volt. Map sensor is too high, over 3.5 volts with very specific enabling conditions. Don't forget those. It's what you're going to do when you're diagnosing a problem. You know what a signal should be under certain operating conditions. And the operating conditions are what we call enabling conditions. They're there, so we set a code for the right reason. If a fault is recognized, a code is stored in memory. Stored in memory because a two-trip code will set a pending code and wait for a second, second consecutive failure before it turns the mill on. A one-trip code is going to turn the mill on immediately. Any circuit abnormality detected will cause a DTC. Now, circuit abnormalities are easy to find. They're continuity checks. Opens, shorts to grounds, shorts to power. That's your 106, 107. Uh, the 107, 108. 106 is a little harder to find. Now, the PCM does its job. Coolant sensor is too high. Inlet aperture is normal. There's no 112 or 113 present. The ETC has been high for over 15 seconds. Now, what effect will this problem have on engine performance? Does this answer one of the problems you're looking for? Are you running into a coal misfire? Why would it be a cold misfire? Well, if the engine coolant is calibrated too high, we don't go into cold enrichment. And without cold enrichment, we get misfires. Does this tell you something? 
Does this give you a clue of how you use this to work on the vehicle? Yeah, these are simple codes. But what this is going to do is going to create a freeze frame. It's going to block fuel control from running. It's going to block the O2 monitor, the catalyst monitor, the misfire monitor, the canister purge, the EGR monitors are all going to be stopped because they all are defined a particular temperature and we've had a temperature since our failure. Watch out for blocking conditions. Once you clear this, you may get something coming back in one of these block monitors. So just seeing this alone, you need to go see what was freeze frame. Well, we just started the car up, 10% load, 825 RPM. We have long-term, short-term fuel trim and a temperature of 304. Probably looking for a shorted sensor. Go find out. It's easy to solve. And boom, we got it done. But what we see when we look at our status, a whole bunch of things are not completed because we're blocked by this coolant temperature problem. You see how this begins to tie together? Now, rationality checks are some of the more sophisticated diagnostics. Each input is compared against all the other inputs and stored information about vehicle operation to see if the signal makes sense under a particular set of operating conditions. Let's look at one of these. We have a mass airflow of 3.9 volts, very high. We've got a throttle position sensor of 1.9 volts, not open too far. We're doing 2100 RPM. Do these all three make sense? Does this kind of mass airflow look normal for 2100 RPM and a throttle opening 1.9 volts? That is for, for a rationality check. It doesn't make sense. So what happens when an output is commanded on? The PCM can verify that that component was carried out. That command was carried out by the input signals that it expects to see for a change. This is what it does during these tests. For instance, it will go full rich and watch the oxygen sensor. Does it go to a normal full rich level? Then it drives the system full lean. Does the oxygen sensor go full lean? You can find this type of information in mode six. We'll talk about more. Idle air control here. We're running 90% at 545 RPM. The desired idle speed is 750. Does this indicate a problem to idle air control? Very well, good. But there's something wrong. We can't achieve the desired idle speed when we've commanded wide open throttle almost and idle air control, maximum bypass air, and the RPM is still too low. Go look for something restricting airflow. Let the data take you to where we're going. Now, we said earlier, you look at data. Does it tell you something to do? Yes, we identify something wrong here. RPM is too low. Idle control is too high. The diagnostic direction is to go find out why we have lower than normal idle airflow. We need to understand the freeze frame rules. Freeze frame data is stored for the first failed test that sets the DCT and illuminates the mill light. Now the freeze frame data is not updated or refreshed if the test fails a second, third, or fourth time. The exception is fuel trim and misfire codes will overwrite any existing freeze frame record unless it was a fuel trim or DTC code that was already stored. So understand, if you have a, f a freeze frame for fuel trim or DCT, they have overwritten any other code you may have. So if you've got other codes, these are the prime ones because they're the most critical. And so they're stored and kept as a record. Utilizing all this information helps you better understand when you have a successful repair and the other things that need to be done in order to prevent a comeback. Now, these are basic stuff. Yes, we're starting basic. Later, we're going to get far more advanced. 